Hi, my name is A.V. Verzania, and today I'm here with Jabari Talia, Grammy Award-winning producer and engineer. So, Barz, how did you end up working on a Grammy Award-winning album? Um, I mean, essentially, it just came down to the connections that I had, um, the work that I put in for, you know, for a few years. I was working with a client that recommended me to Fantastic Negrito at the time that he was looking for somebody to help him engineer the last day of the album. So what was the process of working with Fantastic Negrito like? Man, it was really involved. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he would have so many ideas and his style of, uh, his style of production, his style of recording, just everything was just different. It was his way, you know. So at times be like, I know you're a hip hop dude, you know, can you lay some mini drums or whatever? And, um, wow. you know, yeah, and then um, there was times he would, you know, have, have me going for sound effects to add, to bring different life to the, I mean, we would be putting chains and whips and all types of things in the drums, in the percussion to give it that, you know, he calls it black roots music. Mm -hmm. So um, he was always trying to capture the sound of the struggle. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was definitely a valuable learning experience working with him. Know, very casual. Uh, he's just a really down to earth guy. Um, you know, we would talk a lot before the sessions, kind of build the chemistry and everything. So I really appreciate the opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. So when you say he had a unique way of going about things, besides mm -hmm. using Foley, what else did he do that was so different from other artists? Well, well, first of all, I mean, we were we did the project on a laptop. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people assume a Grammy Award winning project, but, you know, I mean, the things that we do, like the music that he was trying to really capture and really, um, the message he was trying to bring to people wasn't, you know, fancy studio, was he was really trying to get the nitty gritty. So, I mean, we were in the middle of a room mm -hmm. with the mic, a laptop, um, and, and not to mention, this man uh, was in a really bad accident in the late 90s, I think mid to late 90s, and one of his whole hands doesn't even really move. Wow. So he's strumming a guitar <laughs> with it. I mean, it's not really funny, but it's just, mm -hmm. just how incredible this whole thing really was. You know, there's times I would look over, and I'm, you know, you see people with the pick picking a guitar, and he's like using his hand like this, but he's playing and he's doing it so naturally, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, when I say left, it's like a lot of the things that you would do traditionally in, in a recording environment, when you're doing music of that caliber, mm -hmm. um, it's like in a million dollar studio, or, you know, I mean, you get session musicians and all of this, I mean, you know, he was doing, he was doing it all, and he was doing it his way, and he was, you know, doing it with what he had, and what we had available, mm -hmm. so. That's so inspiring. Yeah. So, Bart, in your opinion, how important is the mixing of a song in terms of translating an artist's vision to the world? It's complete. I mean, it's just as important as uh, writing the song. I mean, it's that important, you know. I mean, because the mix is the next step on how your audience is going to receive that message. You know, it's like. A, it's like when you're trying to say something really important and you think about what tone of voice am I gonna use to make people really understand this passion or this anger or whatever you're trying to communicate, you can't just be like, hey, stop it. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, you know, and that's what the mixing process really does. It really creates the tone and the, um, the color of, of, you know, of the picture that you're trying to paint. Um, and, and because with this music, you know, People are really putting down, you know, when people, when somebody makes a song, it's something that's usually passionate to them or emotional or there's some feeling behind it. Mm -hmm. So you want your audience to get that feeling too because you're trying to convey a message. Um, so the mixing process really allows the artist, after they lay it down, to really form form and shape that song into being what it's meant to be and getting that message across in a way that's going to impact and affect the audience just the way that it affects the artist you know on the inside sure so conversely do you feel that a bad mix could break a song in terms of 
everything relates absolutely. to the world. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, just just as bad. A bad mix could confuse people. Like, you know, some people can't even hear it with the bad mix, you know, so that could be detrimental. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I have another question. So you said that you recorded the album on a laptop. Yeah. So what was the gear that you used? Like the mic and the kind of laptop? Uh, uh, the, well, the laptop was just a, well, it was a souped up MacBook. Okay. Yeah, I mean, definitely had some RAM <laughs> on it, some memory, yeah. <laughs> but the guy, I mean, he had about six hard drives that we were working on with just catalogs of music from, I'm assuming the beginning of his career, which is in the early 90s. Um, to, you know, to present, and uh, the gear, the microphone, what kind of microphone do we use? I think he had like a Rhodes NT. Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 okay. Rhodes. And then, um, you know, we had a bunch of dynamic mics, SM58s, mm -hmm. SM57s, um, which, I mean, a lot of the recording of the guitar was on like, I mean, I, I don't want to like put any secrets out there, <laughs> sure. you know, because this, this is this, the recipe that he really did, <laughs> he put this right. together was just mm -hmm. incredible. But uh, but He's yeah, I mean, a bit. yeah, I mean, cause cause the sound that he was going for wasn't like ultimately crispy or like he mm -hmm. sonically he wasn't trying to have you hear every single pluck of the guitar. Mm -hmm. He wanted you to get the message, right. you know. He's I mean. He's an excellent musician, but he's he's a, a songwriter, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, you know, a lot of his career is, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, the guy can play guitar and he could play piano and do other things, but, you know, he's a songwriter and he has great ideas and, you know, he's trying to convey a message. You know, the song kind of just what helps, you know, row that boat. So Jabari, how did you get your start in music and are you classically trained? My start in music came from, my grandfather was a, was a band teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, he was also in the, in the military, in the, in the Navy, Navy band. Um, so music was always a big thing around the house. Um, I also had relatives that were jazz musicians and that were in, the, you know, in music. I think uh, my grandfather was really the one that really kind of picked up on that and, you know, offered to give me um, private lessons and stuff from like an early age. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, my parents were supportive of, you know, me doing music at an early age, um, you know, and, and, uh, and then when I was in middle school, I was, you know, uh, involved with the, the middle school band or whatever, and marching band and things like that. I was always just very, like, the type of person that I am, like, if I want to do something, like, I really put my mind to it, and, and I don't necessarily need, like... Approval. You know, yeah, I don't really need the approval. Like, I've always kind of had, like, a rebellious type of type of spirit, not in a bad way, but just about, you know, things that I want to do. If I want to do it, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to attempt it. I'm going to try it. I got a full scholarship coming out of high school, full ride to San Francisco State where I was able to further my education in music and music business. That's uh, great. Yeah, and I think I think that was kind of the change between, you know, my family kind of seeing like, okay, maybe he can do something, you know, because high school was a little bit rough, you know, I wasn't sure about what I wanted to do, you know, and, and you know, I was just figuring some things out. But going to college, you know, definitely changed my perspective on a lot of things. I mean, I'm around just all different types of people, people from all different types of black backgrounds. Right. So it's been a big year for Oakland natives. First, Mahershala Ali won an Oscar for Moonlight, which was an amazing film. And now you've won a Grammy for The Last Days of Oakland. What is it about this city? What is it about this city that breeds artistic excellence? Mm. That's an excellent question. I mean, this is Oakland, man. Like, just the coat, like, city of rebels. You know what I'm saying? Revolutionary city. Uh, I mean, I mean, I know just me growing up, I grew up around artists and, you know, creative people and different thinking people. I mean, this is the Bay. Like, everything we do is different, you know? So, um, I just think that mindset 
growing up around that mindset and growing up around people that was just willing to fight and die for what they believe in, you know what I'm saying? That pushes you to just, you know, when you have these ideas and you, you know, you really feel like you want to express these ideas, I was never afraid to, you know, and same with Mahershala, shout out to him. I think, like, I think it's just the culture that just breeds that, that type of mentality and that type of creativity. So Bars, what projects are you working on currently and what's your plan for the next year? Well, currently, um, I got my hands in a lot of pots. Um, of course, we're working together. Yes, we are. And um, we have an EP that we're looking forward to release very soon. Um, I also have an instrumental project um, that I'm working on that I want to release very soon um, with some of the sounds and beats and, and music that I've just kind of been sitting on and you know I've, I've you know I work with a lot of artists so a lot of people hear my music um, underneath you know an artist um, you know I, I just want to put my music out there for the people that just enjoy listening to the sound. I got a project with my folks, Darama, from Lakeview, San Francisco, um, and uh, a few other things in the works right now. A lot of new and up-and-coming artists that I'm working with that I'm excited to, to be able to present um, now that I have this platform. So, y'all you know, just stay tuned. <laughs> That's great. So tell me a little bit more about your instrumental project. Mm -hmm. I'm curious as to, you know, what type of sounds we can expect and what's your vision for that? Uh, well, my instrumental project, um, you know, I mean, I don't sing or rap or anything, but... Uh, Sometimes you do, behind the scenes. <laughs> you, know, you might catch me, uh, but <laughs> right now with this instrumental project, really what I, I want to do is I want to just get more musical. Because a lot of times with the beats that I make for artists, I try and limit, you know, too much of the complexities um, to, to give space and room for the vocalist. Um, but now, you know, since I'm not the vocalist, I want to let my fingers speak and I want to, you know, I want to create different moods with, with uh, some of the songs, the melodies that I got. And um, I just want people to experience what I have to offer as a musician. That's so, great. Yeah, I got a little bit of R&B, um, you know, of course, hip hop and rap, um, some, some interest, some pop, some reggae, some electronic dance music. Um, so yeah, those are some of the genres that I'm kind of dabbling in. Mm -hmm. And um, when it comes to the Foley, I know we had talked earlier about Negrito using Foley in his music. That's also something that I'm doing as well. So expect to expect to hear, you know, some some environments in there. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be different because I'm trying to capture a moment and I'm trying to paint a picture with just sounds. So Bars, a lot of independent artists like you mm -hmm. are starting to create their own companies and go to the major labels for distribution only. Mm -hmm. Is that something that we can expect from you? Well, I mean, honestly, uh, potentially, yeah. Um, I mean, I definitely need a major check. <laughs> but, um, I mean, other than that, I mean, if, if somebody, anybody, not just a major label, but if anybody was pre to present um, an opportunity for me, I'm definitely considered an opportunity and what they can offer. Absolutely. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm open-minded. Mm -hmm. So do you have any plans for a company or... Are you working um, on other people's projects? Yeah, as, as of now, I mean, I'm, I'm essentially building my own platform independently. Okay. Um, to, to, do, to do the things that, you know, the distribution, the marketing and promotion, and, um, you know, all the things that entail with the creative production. So, Wonderful. Yeah. And what advice would you give to other young people who would like to follow in your footsteps? Um, following my footsteps, I would say believe in yourself, you know, and believe in your own ideas because, I mean, my footsteps, that's, you know, that's just how I got to where I'm going. And, and I may be a blueprint for some people, but, but one footstep that they should definitely follow is the fact that I always um, trusted my instincts, you know, and I allowed uh, my instincts and my passion to, to just guide me through this process because it's not easy. You know, and everybody, you know, every entrepreneur knows that, you know, it takes time to really build, 
your business or build your wealth or build, you know, I mean, when you're doing it from the ground up. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, young people that want to, you know, be entrepreneurs and follow their dreams, um, never give up. So that's, that's the only advice. I, I can have. I mean, other than that too, um, yeah, no business. Understand business. Um, that's a big thing. If you live in America, you should understand business, period. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for this interview. Yeah, absolutely. It was great. Once again, I'm A.V. Verzania, and I'm here today with Grammy Award winning producer and engineer Jabari Tawia, also known as Bars Makes Bangers, at Studio Momentum in Oakland, California. And it's been such a pleasure to do this interview with you. Oh yeah, the pleasure is all mine. I'm, I'm just really honored uh, to be honored. Um, and um, I have to thank Fantastic Negrito um, and all the good people at Black Ball Universe um, for allowing me the opportunity to be a part of a Grammy Award winning project. And um, I just want to say, um, you know, it's, it's really taken a lot of heart to uh, to get here. Patience and, and intense dedication. and, and for anybody that, that's looking at this interview and that aspires to just achieve their own greatness and, and to achieve their dreams, um, just keep that in mind, man. Patience and intense dedication and just, you know, give it your heart. And um, thank you guys. Thank you.